Two words for you, butter tart. Now, if you've never heard of these, they're like little bite-sized individual pies that you can customize with just about any kind of filling you love, and they are delicious. So grab your apron, get inspired, and let's make something fun together today from the Dewey Kitchen. Now today's episode is kind of like a two for one because not only are we going to make the butter tart, but in the process we're going to learn how to make a simple pie crust. So before we get started, here are all the ingredients you'll need to make a great butter tart. For the pastry, you'll need two and a fourth cups all-purpose flour, one tablespoon brown sugar, half cup shortening very cold and cut into cubes, half cup butter also very cold and cut into cubes, approximately six to eight tablespoons of ice water. For the tart filling, you'll need half cup lightly packed brown sugar, half cup corn syrup, a fourth cup unsalted melted butter, one egg, one teaspoon vanilla extract, and a quarter teaspoon salt. And for this version of the recipe, we're using milk chocolate chips for the filling. Okay, I've got all my dry ingredients in the food processor ready to go. Now, I will tell you that if you were thinking about making a basic pie crust, you might want to substitute regular sugar for brown sugar. But in this case, we're using some brown sugar. Now, we're going to take our very cold butter and our very cold shortening. I can't stress enough how important it is to keep everything cold. I take my sliced butter and shortening and put it in the freezer for a good 15 to 20 minutes or just take it out right when I'm ready to use it. Additionally, you're going to want to keep your pie pastry very cold while you're working it. If at any time it starts to get warm, just put it back in the freezer for a good 15 minutes and then continue working. Keep everything as cold as possible. And we're going to add that in here. And we're going to give this a, a few good pulses. Now, remember, the goal is never to completely mix this together. The goal is just to get the butter and the shortening maybe processed into little tiny pea chunks. So I'm going to give it just a few pulses here. And that's looking pretty good to me. And after we've done that, we're going to take a bowl and we are going to just pour this into the bowl. Now, at this point, it's not going to look like a dough, but we're going to start taking some cold water and we're going to mix this in here, maybe two or three tablespoons to start out with and just mix it together with a fork here. Start letting the dough come together. Now eventually it's going to start sticking together. But you're going to add more water as you go. Don't add too much at first. Just do a tablespoon or two at a time because it will stick together pretty quickly. Now again, don't worry if you see chunks of butter or shortening in the crust. That's perfectly fine. The idea isn't to get it all completely mixed together. The idea is to just let it come together to where you can make it into a little ball here in a minute. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit more water. I think that that's beginning to come together really nicely and I'm going to start using my hands here. Okay, and here we have just a nice ball that isn't terribly sticky, uh, but it is certainly pliable and easy to work. Now I'm going to take this, place this over here, and I'm going to divide this into two pieces here. I'm going to just pat this down a little bit here. Pat each one down a little bit. And 
into a little disc. Now, why am I doing this? Well, we're about to put this into the refrigerator or the freezer so that it gets nice and cold again and settles as a dough. And just patting these down into little discs like this will help them freeze a little bit better. Now I'm gonna wrap these in cling wrap. And there you have it. Two nice discs of pie crust ready to go for your tarts. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator or the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes, and we'll catch you on the other side of this. Okay, so while the dough is chilling, we're gonna make the filling for the little tarts, and it couldn't be simpler. I've got all my ingredients here, and all I'm gonna do is just start popping all of this into the bowl, the salt and the sugar, the egg, melted butter, and the corn syrup. I'm just going to give this a good mix. And now I'm going to add my vanilla. Now I know how much the recipe calls for, but I like vanilla, so I'm going to pour, you know, just, oopsie, maybe a little more than is called for. Give it a good final mix. And I'm going to take my measuring cup and I'm going to pour this in here. And that is it. You're done. How simple is that? I'm going to set this aside and we're going to go on and this will be ready to use when we're ready to fill the tarts. Okay, I think our dough has sufficiently chilled and we're just gonna unwrap it here and get ready to roll it out. Now, I'm going to flour my surface here generously. And then I'm gonna flour both sides of my pie crust here. Then I'm gonna just work it down a little bit. I'm gonna flatten it a little bit before I start rolling it out, just to help it along a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna work this out. I'm gonna flour as I go along, just to keep everything from sticking. Now you wanna roll this out to be pretty thin. You don't wanna roll it out to where it's gonna break as you pick it up, but it does need to be pretty thin. I'm gonna take my cookie cutter here and I'm going to just cut several rounds here. Notice I'm working pretty quickly because I want to keep this dough very, very chilled. And I'm going to pull this apart here. And I'm going to take my very well sprayed muffin pan here and I'm going to just press these down in here. I'm going to sort of mold them into the side there, just like that. Kind of press them down at the bottom. Make sure you don't break them down here at the bottom. And you're making these perfect little pie shells that are just beautiful. Now, there you go, super easy. You're gonna repeat this process, you're gonna fill up your muffin tin, and then you're gonna put this in the freezer and let the shells get really good and chilled again. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I think our pie shells have sufficiently chilled, and now we're gonna add this delicious filling. Now, I like chocolate, so I'm gonna add some chocolate chips, but you could add any number of things. You could add raisins, 
or almonds or pecans or minced fruit. Just make sure whatever you add is chopped up finely because we're not going to add a lot to each of these little pies. So I'm just going to add maybe a couple of chocolate chips into each of these. You'll notice I'm not putting a whole lot. Doesn't take much for these little bite-sized pies. And now we're going to take our filling that we made earlier and we're just going to pour it in. Now you're going to pour these about three quarters full. You don't need to fill these all the way to the top. Look at how beautiful that looks already. It is going to be delicious. Okay, these look pretty good. Now, I'm gonna err on the side of caution and I'm gonna put these back into the freezer for maybe 10 minutes or so. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when really cold pie crust hits a really hot oven, that's when they will just become flaky and delicious. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator and then I'm gonna pop these into a really hot oven and I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, I've taken these out of the oven and I've let them cool for a little bit and then I took a knife and I just worked around the edges and popped them out of the muffin tin and I've plated a few here of these just to let you see how adorable these little guys are. Let's taste one. Oh, I can hardly wait here. Flaky crust, beautiful filling here. Mmm. That is just so delightful. Mmm. You could have this with a cup of coffee. You could have this with a glass of milk. You could have it with a little side of ice cream. It would be absolutely delicious. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button so you'll know when the next episode comes up. And we'll see you next time on From the Dewey Kitchen. If you tried this recipe, great job, and we want to know how it turned out. So send a photo of your results to I tried it at fromthedeweykitchen.com, and maybe you'll be featured on the next episode.